We're glad you joined us once again for our broadcast, and we are going to conclude today the dialogue of, of Elihu in the book of Job. Uh, Elihu has been going on for several chapters now in our text, and he has been confronting Job, pointing to, out to Job the direction that he's headed that is not right. Rather than headed in the direction of exalting God, Job is headed in the direction of challenging God. Elihu is calling him out, and for the most part, his argument has been very, very much on target. And we'll see today that it is, continues to be on target. So we're in chapter uh, 37 today. We left off with verse 1 last time where it says, At this also my heart trembles and leaps from its place. So that's Elihu's uh, uh, response to the greatness of God that he has already been talking about and demonstrating. And he wants Job to follow that same pattern, as we'll see throughout this chapter. In verse 5, he says, God thunders with his voice wondrously, doing great things which we cannot comprehend. So he's continuing to go on to talk about the magnificence of God that should cause us to, to tremble. Then he starts getting particular here. And starting in verse 6, uh, going down to, uh, to, verse, to verse 13, he, he talks about the various ways in which God controls uh, this universe and all that's involved in this universe. He talks about snow and he talks about rain. He talks about animals. He talks about uh, the waters, the, the frozen waters, I guess, uh, as, as well as other things. He talks about lightning. <clears throat> and uh, all these things are in God's universe. All these things are created by him. And even more than that, all these things are controlled by him. He is in charge and he takes care of these things. So what should that do for us? Well, verse 13, whether for correction or for his world or for loving kindness, he causes it to happen. So he nails it down. You see all these things, Job. You go out into uh, to the world, into nature, and uh, everywhere you look, you see things happening. Well, now who controls that? Who orchestrates all of that? Well, it's God. Whether he wants to correct something, uh, whether he wants to show loving kindness, to something, he causes it to happen. So the sovereignty of God is once again on display. He is sovereign. He runs a whole universe, Job, not just your little life, and he does it as he chooses to do it. Uh, in uh, verse 14, he says, listen to this, O Job, <clears throat> stand and consider the wonders of God. So this is this is where he's leading him. The, uh, just as he finished uh, began this chapter with the uh, trembling of his heart, before God, he now calls for Job to stand and consider the wonders of God, just, just the marvels of what God has done and what God is doing, how, how looking at these things and examining these things should uh, change the way we per perceive life and uh, definitely how we perceive God. In verse 23, he says, The Almighty, we cannot find him. He is exalted in power, and he will not do ju violence to justice and abundant righteousness. Therefore, men fear him. He does not regard any who are wise of heart. So he wants to pull this together. He's, he's talking about what God orchestrates and controls, his sovereignty, and that no one can tell God what to do. And he tells Job to listen to this, to pay attention, uh, to uh, pay, pay attention to what's going on, and to process it properly as God wants him to process it. But when he comes to the end, he admits, as Joe, as Paul does at the end of Romans chapter 11, after he's talked about the, the great wonders of God in that chapter, and he comes to the end and says, God is unsearchable. There, there comes a place where we can go no further, where we can understand no more than what we've already understood. God has shown himself to, a, to an extent, but there is only a, an extent. There is always a place where we can go no further <clears throat> and understanding <clears throat> in this life. Look at verse 23. The Almighty, we cannot find him. He is exalted in power, and we will do, we will not do violence to justice and abundant righteousness. Therefore, men fear him. He does not regard any who are wise of heart. So just same verses, wonderful verses. We cannot find him, he says, and yet we can exalt him. I, I think that's one of the great lessons of the book of Job. I think it's one of the great lessons of Christian life. Uh, we understand him to the extent that he's revealed himself to some degree in nature, as Elihu has pointed out, but more, more uh, in, in, exclu inclusively in the 
Word of God itself, where he has shown us clearly what God is like as much as can be shown. But there is a limit to what the human mind can understand. There's a limit to what we can comprehend. But when we come to that end of that limit, uh, what do we do? Well, he says we exalt his power. We, we don't challenge him. We don't question him. We praise him. I think that's a proper response of Old Testament people like Job. It's a proper response of New Testament people, as Paul pointed out in Romans 11, is where we are. If we try to figure out God completely before we exalt him, we'll never get there. But when we realize that he is beyond our comprehension, and yet he's still a magnificent and wondrous God who loves us and, and takes care of us and it controls the whole universe, uh, and we have the privilege of honoring him and glorifying him and exalting him with our lives, that should change the way we see life and the way we live life. Hope it does for you, and hope you have a wonderful day in the Lord.